أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Suzanne is 22 and has been a Muslim for two years. She decided to get married five months after converting to Islam and now has a baby daughter. I'm just going to start on the shepherd's pie. I never even thought, you know, in my younger days that I'd even think about becoming a Muslim. And I just started thinking, well, there's got to be more to life than going out and, you know, working as just what I was doing. And it went from there, I started questioning everything, really. I wanted uh, proofs, you know, and Islam was the, really the only religion that could offer me proofs of that. Um, and I asked all the questions, all the questions which I needed to, you know, ask were answered over the course of about three months. And then it was just a case of taking that step. As my husband, Imran fulfills the rights of housing your wife, yeah, providing a house for paying, I don't pay anything towards the rent or if you buy a house, yeah. Uh, all my clothes Imran buys, I mean, that doesn't mean to say I can't go out and buy my own course yeah but that is a right of the Muslim woman that she's provided for and the fact that Imran should I mean the Prophet used to help his wives in the household and that should really be shown also yeah which Imran does of course not many people would think uh, that a Muslim man would do that you know help out his wife and look after the baby uh, because people don't actually see Islam for what it is they tend to see the stereotypes, the cultures. In many cultures, the men won't do things like that. You know, the woman will probably, possibly even be oppressed in certain cultures. But that's the difference between culture and Islam. And in Islam, you know, the woman is not oppressed in any way. Um, which is, it's just a big stereotype that needs to be broken down, really. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, it's daytime. It's daytime, look. Okay. Okay. Don't give me trouble now. Don't give me trouble. Eh? Okay. One of the things you notice, I mean, this is prior to actually being, being married, is that there is, you know, subtle underlying racism in, in society, you know, as opposed to, say, 20 years ago, when, when people could simply shout abuse um, and it would be commonplace. Nowadays, it's, it's a lot more hidden. You know, and I'm not foolish enough to think that it's, it's disappeared. Um, on the contrary, there is still lots and lots of racism out there. Now, after getting, uh, getting married to Suzanne, um, I'll admit that I think I did underestimate the level of this in society. Um, on the whole, it's, it's just subtle. It can be, you know, a sly look. A lot of the time it's looks. Um, you know, no one really... People, I, think, I get the impression people are quite wary of Muslims who look like Muslims anyway, so rather than be confrontational, you know, they do what they think they can get away with. You know, I've grown up in a very multicultural environment and, uh, and Suzanne hasn't. And now, looking at it from the inside, she can see um, that apart from the big cities, um, people aren't used to seeing people like us. You know, there's a place called Clitheroe, which is quite close to here. You know, and, you know, it's a quaint little English village. You know, it's very nice in the summer. You know, lots of tourists go there. And Suzanne used to go there with her family. So, you know, she wanted to share that with me. And, um, you know, we, we ended up going there and we felt very much excluded from what was going on, you know, to the point where, you know, we felt that we were being watched intensely by everyone and anyone. What's wrong? What's wrong? It's done. Everything done. Look. Imran... Uh, as my husband and other Muslim men uh, shouldn't really go out to have a conversation with another woman you know, if, there's no, if there's no need for it. It doesn't mean to say you ignore the opposite sex point blank, uh, but you're not supposed to get involved in a deep conversation with them where they get to know you, you get to know them, and one thing leads to another. So that's, on, you know, that's both for the man and the woman. There has to be an element of modesty for both. Um, this is, she's, uh, she's playing up a bit. Okay. If you pray first, I'll make some milk feeder, get her settled, and then I'll pray afterwards. Yeah. Come on, Daddy. 
Come on, sweetheart. I think she'll go to sleep. Yeah. If she does, just join, yeah? Okay. Just join the prayer with me. Okay. I knew Imran before I married him for a matter of weeks, to be honest. I'm not going to say that I wasn't scared at all because it's a scary mm. thing. Um, but because I was doing it for the sake of, of you know, my beliefs and the sake of my religion, then that kind of overcame that fear. Where's Daddy? Where's Daddy? Where's... It's an important thing when you're getting married that you're attracted to that person. It's one of the things that stated beauty is one thing that, that you take into consideration. And if you're not attracted to the other person, then, you know, I wouldn't marry somebody that I wasn't attracted to. Cooking is actually an interesting subject because uh, one of the first things that Suzanne said to me, which was born out of a fear of being expected to cook, I think, was that she couldn't boil an egg. I just said, look, you know, we both got defined roles within, within Islam, um, but there's going to be give and take. To be honest, I'm not that fussy with food. You know, I, I could bear, you know, the odd average meal not listening um, for uh, you know for a little while but you know to be honest I'm really proud of her because she's just taken to it like a duck to water it's it's just what what she does you know and uh, she does it very well you know Suzanne's got a whole variety of stuff from Caribbean um, Mexican Indian Italian um, English traditional English dishes and uh, well she keeps on surprising me really I suppose uh, I've been rewarded for my uh, my patience. I suppose. Come on. Yes. Okay, Imran. Yeah. Um, I need to pray. Can, can you take her for me, please? Thank you. Can I just let mommy pray? Bismillah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. سوزان and her husband have been invited to a friend's wedding, and Suzanne is keen to integrate her side of the family into her new life. Are we going to ask my mum to come tomorrow to the wedding? Um. Because you thought it'd be a good idea. I, I think it's a good idea because, um, as of yet, uh, I, I don't think that we fully involved your side of the family in, in the kind of the, the complete way we live our lives. I mean, they're yeah. obviously aware yeah. that we're Muslim and we practice Islam. I'll see what she says. Yeah, I'll I think she'll she'll come. She might be a bit shocked at the segregation. Well, mum's been introduced to a lot since I've become Muslim. Beforehand, she probably didn't know much about Islam at all, um, other than what she saw in our hometown, which was not really any practicing Muslims, just Asians. Yeah, but isn't that what you know? Uh, communities all all over the country see. They see, well, predominantly Asians, Pakistanis, as Muslims. Therefore, view the religion as that. Yeah, that's it. Definitely. Even my friends thought, you know mention the word, you know, Pakistani and this and that, rather than becoming a Muslim, yeah. Um, so they, they viewed it as you becoming a Pakistani? Some, some, yeah. Taking up the culture and stuff. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think well, I, I appreciate the fact that your family respect me. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Even though they may have had preconceived ideas. Yeah. Um, that's such a blessing that you get on with my family. I don't know, you know, that's really important to me. But they've also, they've also got issues as well. Yeah. Yeah, and the scarf's quite a hard thing, for my f understandably, for my family to, you know, it's a big change and it's a big statement as well. And the last thing I want to do is upset my parents through all this, because, you know, and the last thing I want to do is cause any friction, so I was brought up Christian, yeah. They didn't expect this, it's just a big yeah. turnaround, really. So I can understand it, you know, from going out dressed just as your normal 20-year-old would in this, this country, to dress in like this, it's like, okay. <laughs> and then that's what they will see Islam is. 
I have to dress like this, I can't drink anymore, rather than looking at why I've actually chosen this way, you know, the belief of Islam, you know, why it makes sense to me. But I hope, I can understand why, and I hope it'll, you know, come, I hope they can understand one day. <laughs> Suzanne is in her final year of teacher training. She encourages her new friends to meet old college friends whenever possible. Sit down. Mm. <laughs> wow, how or in London. I know. You don't need toys, you know. <laughs> just shake a bottle. <laughs> Before Sudan was Muslim, we used to go out um, drinking quite a bit, you know, it was like party life for all first years. So in terms of, um, you know, our social life has changed quite a bit. And, you know, with the birth of Zara, um, I, we don't really see each other as much as we used to because, you know, Suzanne's got great responsibilities now, but we still have our girly chats and any yeah, problems I've got, I still always go to Suzanne. It, yeah. still let me know. Our relationship hasn't changed in that respect. But Not at all, no. In other respects. But just in terms socially. of our social life, yeah. Like we don't go out to the pub anymore or, you know, we have to actually think about what we're going to do more. That's it. Um, you know, if we want to go out for dinner or something, you have to... Uh, think about it a little bit. Because there's a ball, isn't there, at the end yeah. of this year for our university? Yeah. But I'm going to arrange a meal for Julie and Adele and the friends that I used to live with mm -hmm. and have it here. Just have, you know, a kind of social get together here. Yeah, so that we can still say, you know, goodbye to each other at the end of the year, but in so the that, yeah, mm -hmm. so that we're all included again instead of a big ball. Yeah. So uh, it works out. Yeah, it works out fine, yeah. So, to be honest, I actually, I do miss going out coming with Suzanne because. Um, she was really, it was a really good laugh. Um, we used to have a really, really good time and I've got some fantastic memories of when we used to go out, you know, to pubs drinking. Oh, bless you. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really matter to me whether, because I've still got other friends who I can go out with. And Suzanne's still fundamentally the person that she was, that she was, you know, to talk to, so it's still okay. It hasn't changed, like, the strength of friendships, it's just changed what you do together. Definitely, yeah. There's more to friendships than well, just going out it. to the pub, isn't there? there is. And your true friends stick by you yeah, no matter definitely, what. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think a lot, when people come to Islam, I think a lot of people find that, who you know, find out who the true friends are and who aren't really. Yeah. Imran? Yeah. Is it okay if we go to my mum's now? What time is it? Because we need to get there for six. Uh, if we leave in about five minutes, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. All right, then. All right, you want to get Pop ready? Yeah, I'm going to get her ready. What about Julie and Adele? Um, well... Are they coming with us? No. They're going home. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, so just... Oh, well, oh Jack... Make sure they say, uh, say bye before they go. Yeah. yeah, of course. Suzanne's mother and grandmother still live in the area where Suzanne was brought up. I think they've taken it really well, considering everything in the past two years, what they've had to take on board, Imran, Zara, my course, um, and becoming Muslim then I think they've dealt with it really well. I know there's some things, such as Christmas and, you know, etc., that they still feel upset about, and, I'm, you know, I'm not going to pretend that it's easy, but it certainly has not made our relationships worse. When Suzanne first told me she was turning Muslim, I think perhaps I didn't want to believe it at first. I didn't really take much notice. I think you thought it was um, a phase, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. remember Just her saying to me, yeah, oh, just thought it was a phase. phase. Yeah, we did, really. But well, I've realised since that it's not a phase. <laughs> <coughs> and we have to accept it, don't we? Well, it's not that bad, is it? No, no, it's not bad. No, so, it's always been very supportive. As long as she's happy, then, you know, that's all that matters, really, to me, as long as she's happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we've talked about it quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, made sure that, because I think, especially in my dad as well, the, the fear of losing me and me perhaps... Mm, your dad felt that way, didn't he? Yeah, I? perhaps leaving my family because, but that's not the case, is it, at all? No, I never felt that you would. I feel, I actually feel closer, I don't know about you, but I feel closer to you now. Mm. We've always been close, but Islam's taught me what parents mean and what your mother means. Mm. and, your, and um, Yeah. The way I would have spoke to my mum in the past, yeah, as a teenager. As a teenager. I would never dream of speaking to my mum like that now. No. At Christmas time it, it is hard because perhaps on Christmas Day itself um, I still would like us all to have a meal together. And that doesn't happen now, and especially now Zara's born. I remember last year on Christmas Day night feeling... Yeah, 
But you, the thing uh, is, this year I'm more prepared for it, I suppose. Yeah, it gets easier, and you know, and I understand that it's hard. Mm. I really do. I'm not, you know, mm. it's hard, but then I see it. Well, you know, Christmas isn't everything, is it? No. Ooh. The Christian belief Ooh. in Jesus uh, is that He is the Son of God contradicts what I believe. And going there and having a meal on Christmas Day, even though your intention is not to celebrate it, you are in fact sitting there celebrating it. Now I can understand that people will say, well why can't um, your fam you know, why, why can your family come and celebrate your celebrations but you can't celebrate theirs? But it all depends on the individual. In taking part in maybe Eid or an Islamic wedding, wouldn't be contradicting anything that my mum believes in her life. It wouldn't be contradicting her way of life. She'd simply be coming to maybe uh, educate herself about, you know, Islam, about Muslims, and you know, have an an opening to the way I live my life.